We're calling the meeting to order at, uh, I'll say it's now 4.39, uh, the Conway Select Board meeting, May 24th. As usual, our meetings are available on uh, FCAT through our FCAT uh, uh, video on demand on YouTube. If you go to FCAT Media at YouTube, you will see all of our meetings. So the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Um, so, the, so the minutes that we're looking to approve are from two weeks ago. We we did get another set of minutes from a week ago, but but they're not in the minutes, so we'll look to approve them later. They were in there. They were in there. I, I, not they, the they're not in the agenda though. We, we we got we received them in the email. Uh, the, only, the only minutes we mentioned in the agenda are May tenth. I don't. I think they were in the attachment, though. Maybe not listed. Maybe not described. They were not. Yes, they were. They, yes, I, they were in the attachment. I, yes, by so all means. Uh, so, did everybody look at the May tenth minutes? Yes, they are yeah. excellent. Two weeks ago, great. they look fine to me. So, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the minutes of May tenth. A second. Oh, and yes. everybody say aye. Aye. So Phil says I, Erica says I, and I say I. Hey, hey Ross, are we allowed to approve the minutes of May 17th if they weren't in the agenda? It's probably best to wait until the following week when it's on the agenda. I, I think that's true. So there's there's no hurry on it, I think. And we could always make them available if anybody really wants to see them. But okay, so we have three warrants. Uh, today is a warrant day. So we have a vendor warrant for $158,860.90. We have a payroll warrant for $115,616.13. And we have a payroll deduction warrant for $29,058.03. Did anybody have any issue with any of the backup material? I did not. No, I already went down there and looked through all the receipts and all is well, all is well. They look good. Okay, yeah. then I'll make a motion that we approve all three of those uh, warrants. Second. Yeah, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Phil says aye, Eric says aye, and I say aye. Good. Okay, meetings attended by select board members. So Erica, we usually start with you. Uh, so I was at the meeting with Ron Sweet at the grammar school last week where we um, approved the new plan for where the new access road to the salt shed and the highway garage is going to go. Um, and then I was at the um, meeting that we had with the DEP on Friday about um, uh, the state uh, offering free testing to residents um, for PFAS in private wells. Um, so yeah, those were my two meetings this week. Great. How about you, Phil? Yeah, I, I attended both of those meetings that Erica just described, and I also had a uh, Conway Grammar School meeting, um, uh, which will be the last Conway Grammar School meeting on Zoom. So hooray. Oh. <laughs> that, was that happy or a sad event? For, for me, that's a happy event because... <laughs> It's a small group and you're in a big room anyway. And eh, we just spent all that money on ventilation. So, <laughs> oh, so, yeah, you know, it's nice. It's nice being with your friends too. And it's nice renewing the tradition of going to the inn after the meetings. I'm looking that forward to that. that. We could do that anyway. No, uh, no, nah, nah, not really. Not unless we're ordering food. <laughs> I too. Uh attended those two meetings. And, and the first one actually was officially a select board meeting and a board of health meeting. And uh, as the minutes would testify. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, uh, and then I also had, a, we had a, a conservation commission meeting and we had a conservation commission site visit to the Eversource project where they're gonna be replacing the towers right there by Pine Hill Road and the Shelburne Falls Road, if you know where the where the pipeline was proposed to cross and the big high tension lines across the Shelburne Falls Road. 
and they're going to be so if people come to you worried about what Eversource is up to or what somebody is up to it's they're just going to be replacing towers uh they're slowly marching across conway continuing what they did for the last couple of years and going all the way to montague actually and uh and the same thing as Zoom. I did post that, that all that stuff out to next door Conway, and lots of non Conway people are also interested in what's going on with PFAS testing. It is, it is a hot topic. And I found it interesting to hear that PFAS is contained in the mosquito spray. They're going to be, oh, of, course. Aerial of, spraying, course. So. of course, of course, of course. Everything is related. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so do we have any public comments? We do have some public attending the meeting. Any public comments? Yeah, Mary. I, I was curious about the new access road for the salt shed and where, how is, right now it, it's like kisses the, the sheep, old sheep barn. Now, where's it going to go? It's gonna kiss right next to it. It's kissing the now. It's gonna it's gonna kiss the current path just on the other side of the path. It's gonna go between the two trees. Oh, yeah, that will probably not help those trees out. But okay, but still well, far yeah. enough away from the little school. Yeah, That's and Ron said one of those trees is probably they lose that tree anyway. Um, and by putting that road in, I mean, that gives the property owner next to it the opportunity to like take out his road. So there's not, ultimately what we envision is there, there's not gonna be two roads there. Right. It'll just be the one road and a bunch of lawn. Right, I mean, presumably being a big tree next to a salt shed and a bunch of pavement that has salt on it isn't good, isn't good for the trees anyway. So yeah, but that sounds like a good, good solution. It's still far away, enough away from the kids and the little school. Yeah. For a while, Ron had stakes up kind of showing where the road would go. I don't know if they're still up, but they were up a week ago. And it's it's going to go, the trucks are going to have to go past that uh, bunker that's down there that has the electrical stuff in it. But R Ron seemed to feel that that's going to come out anyway, because the electricity really doesn't need that any anymore. So So that whole thing may come out, but the driveway will go past it. So the trucks won't be traveling over the the land that we don't own that we just have a right of way on so so one of the things that will be interesting is to see how well that new road will do in terms of water flow coming down off of all of that paved area because it's been this chronic issue of erosion of the existing road and flow out onto the fournier road um, so hopefully, however, the, the engineering is done with the road, the new road, it won't just be repeating that issue. No, Ron, Ron actually suggested that it was gonna be the exact opposite. It was gonna improve drainage um, by placing the road like right to the, next to the existing road. Because the grate, there's a drainage grate right next to the electric junction box or close to it, but it's sort of, a foot away from the existing driveway and the new one is going to like is going to incorporate that so he explained but it's not being engineered it's run with an excavator and then when the asphalt comes to pave the highway facility the little bit extra on there and that's poof we have our road um but where does that drainage ditch go where's the drainage thing go to yeah you know somewhere i i do not know Probably down That's to the pond. But, yeah, but it's, it's a good it's, question. Yeah, down to the pond. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Yeah. Because okay. yeah. okay. the, the choices are sort of the pond or uh, the the Mill River. I know the Mill River is considered very sensitive around yeah. that house, uh, around the house, because I know back in the when that there was going to be a cell tower up on that hill. DEP was incredibly particular about how to do a stream crossing there and very concerned about that section of the Mill River. So hopefully whatever the drainage, if it's gonna increase drainage through that drainage thing, it's, yeah, did the, was the Conservation Commission there? So they no. tuned in? No. Be interesting to talk to them about where that drainage is gonna go. 
because it is it is draining. Uh, you know that road will be draining from all of the pavement of the highway garage area, the salt shed area, all going down that road to that place and so to wherever that little drain bit is into the road. So, uh, and there's a lot of, you know, not, not uh, happy for wildlife or plant stuff up there in salt and in diesel and in, you know, whatever. So just, in the in the anticipate potential problems, address them in the planning. Not uh, go. Oh my God! Look what happened um, later on. Category. Just a just a thought. Yeah, good thought. Yeah, there will also be a there, there will need to be a fence for the school as well to because that's just a little bit too close for everybody's comfort for the children at recess. So um, there will be a fence put up to keep said children from darting out into the path. Good too. Okay, uh, any other public comments? Thank you, Mary. We have old business on our agenda. So a week ago, we began looking at mosquito spraying. My goodness. Somebody moving something? <laughs> Rex asked Ross to mute himself. It's, yeah. it's Ross's phone. Or you could mute him. Ross, is that your phone? Um, do you hear a, a rumbling noise? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I stopped the rumbling noise. Sorry about that. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so last uh, two weeks ago, we talked about mosquito spraying and whether Conway was going to opt out. And the, the biggest takeaway from that was that we requested that the Board of Health uh, see if they could come up with a, uh, an, an, a plan, an alternate uh, uh, plan for dealing with mosquitoes. And they did that and they sent it, sent it to us. Thank you very much, Veronique. I, I don't know if you want to summarize it or. Well, I, I need to point out first that it was not the Board of Health. It was simply me because the Board of Health is meeting tonight. So they have not approved it yet. It, it was just what I drafted for them to look at, just to be clear. <laughs> so um, sure, basically in looking at this, the only requirement was that we have a robust education program. Um, which I think is, is fairly easily managed. Um, you know, I'm happy to develop some flyers. Ross and I were talking about this and he had some great suggestions about having people drill holes in their tires if they're gonna have them out in their yard. There's just certain things that are kind of, um, you know, empty your bird bath twice a week or something like that, any standing water. So. I'm happy to develop a flyer on that. Um, we can post it on the website. We can put it in the currents. We can, um, you know, make flyers to go around town. Um, other than that, I, I didn't put in here that <clears throat> I did put in source reduction tire removals because I think that's fairly easily managed for us to do. I've already spoken with the Board of Health about having us get all of our tires under cover. Um, because when I was up there the other day, there was about 100 tires there, and I realized they were all out in the open gathering water. So I think our solution, we'll have to talk about it tonight, but I think our solution is going to be, we have a new trailer up at the transfer station that houses the compost toters, and there's plenty of room in the back, and I think if we just store the tires in the back there, um, and they get picked up in spring and fall, then that should take care of that, and we can keep our eye out on any tire dumps we see around and just clean them up. So, I mean, that that's basically the gist of it is just, um, just dealing with education and kind of some common sense things. So I don't know if you all had a chance to read the, the draft and. Yeah, I, I thought it was great that the state actually offered us a checklist of things we could, we could specify we wanted to do. Um, so that, I mean, it certainly made it, a lot easier to come up with with a proposal to them. I, I, I did want to include two small things that were mentioned uh, in their checklist that we that you hadn't or that the Board of Health hadn't checked. 
And one had to do with uh, that, you know, that our highway department is committed to doing maintenance on the ditches on the side of the road. And I think Ron does that anyway, at least near me, uh, you know, looking for ditches that aren't flowing and generally and, and cleaning out culverts that that are getting clogged up. I, I think they do that pretty well. So checking that that would be one thing that our town does feels to me that it would be reasonable. Okay, yeah, I, I did have in the source reduction, I said there will be a consultation with the highway department to develop a plan and schedule for culvert and ditch cleanouts. Great. So um, I, I can certainly modify that if you wanna add something to it. No, nope, we are. Yeah, we actually have a, a um, we're part of the of a FERCOG grant or a FERCOG program that's doing culverts in the uh, the nine or ten towns that have signed up for that. Oh, and we're one of them. They did a culvert inventory, and they're going around. We're going around doing that, and that's a separate thing from whatever. But we do have a culvert thing yep. going on. Okay, if any of you have any suggested language to pop in there, that, that. Well, that that's that'll evaluate whether our culprits are sized correctly. Oh, okay. And and the and I, the other thing was that the highway department does is I'm pretty sure they do put some a little bit of larvicide into some of the ponds that, where there is standing water, and that was another thing that got mentioned in there in the state's list of things we could be doing. And I think we do. So in addition to those two highway activities, I suggest that we add that they will document these projects so you'll have a way to report on them each year. Great idea. So I think yeah. they've been doing them, but by documenting them, you'll get credit for it. <laughs> right. Good. Okay. So, so if, I, if I draft that language and pass it around again, you can, well, and we'll discuss yeah. it with health tonight, but. Well, yeah. If you could, if you could mention it to the board of health tonight, and they include that in what they pass, that would be great. Sure. And I'm sure whatever you come up with is going to be fine, just from what you've already come up with. So, yeah. okay. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see a need to circulate the modest okay. revisions that you're doing. Let's just okay. print it and go with it. <laughs> so, I think you our mission have... tonight is to vote that we we would. You know, we would like to opt out of mosquito spraying and and complete the form, including the Board of Health um, alternate plan. Yeah, I would say pending uh, their approval, I'm I am on board with that. But let's be clear so, to ascribe credit where credit is due. It is the Verani call. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want? Would you like a wording for a potential motion? Sure, that sounds great. I would have sent this to you earlier, but that would have involved planning. Um, <laughs> at a public at a public meeting, with the option for the for public comment, and after reviewing the alternative mosquito management plan submitted by a member of the board of health, one of you moves the board accept this plan for submission to the executive office of Energy and Environmental Affairs and vote to adopt and opt out, vote to adopt opting out of all mosquito spraying in the town of Conway by the State Reclamation and Mosquito Board. So moved. Yeah, what he said. So, so <laughs> wait, wait, Phil. So, so Phil, Phil, you're gonna make the motion. You're yeah. moving the motion, great. Yeah, yep. yeah. yes, I and, move, uh, I move what, what he said. And, and though before we vote on it, though, you, we do have other people that are at the Zoom meeting tonight. Did anybody come specifically wanting to talk about this? We had a number of people who came to our meeting, including you, Mary, and you can have you can go. But we had a number of people who came two weeks ago and I didn't know. And some of those people, including you, Mary, said you wanted to come back in two weeks when we actually voted on it. And so I'm not sure if anyone else is on board here that would like to talk, but Mary, go ahead. Fabulous, brilliant, marvelous, exactly what I would have hoped for. Thank you. <laughs> thank cool. you. And thanks, Veronique. And thanks for thanks for being flexible with this whole 
oh, is there time, whatever. And especially Veronique, it sounds like making it happen and Ross coming up with really good legal language and yeah, go for it. So thanks, thanks. I think in a general sense, our board was supportive of it and mm -hmm. would have done this even if we didn't have an alternate plan, we just would have said we will create an alternate plan, but actually having one that we can submit is a thousand times better. So I think so. this is also something that we should um, send out a little press release to the recorder. Just this is an item of significant interest and every yeah. town has, and they make a decision in this. It's been in the paper. People have been talking about, when I hear people talking about Montague select board, I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, you don't often hear that in this town, so. Yeah. Well, what are they doing in Montague? They're talking about them so much. No, it's just, you know, because it was in the paper about what they decided. Then Northfield, it was in the paper, and people were just talking about that. You know, so it's, people care about it, about this issue, widespreadly. So we have a motion on the floor, and it's it's been seconded. Yep. And could we get a vote on it? Who, who, all in favor say aye. Aye. Yes, aye. Erica says aye, Phil <laughs> says aye, and I say aye. So I would say that motion passed. Thank you. Can I ask a, a point of clarification? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is submitting the actual plan? Uh, Are you pointing to me? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. It's like the Brady Bunch on here. I don't know what's yeah, going right. on. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ross, are you going to submit it as the TA, or uh, I, I'm not sure who who's appropriate? I would be delighted to submit it on behalf of the town. I'll need to get the vote tonight certified and a few other steps. Okay. All right. Or I could leave it for the next TA, but I'll try to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be a little late at that point. I don't think we have very many days left. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brene. Okay, we have some new business. Uh, some of this may involve interesting discussion. Uh, the first one, in a general sense, has to do with our, our cemetery committee guidelines. And, and I think that the effort is here that we, we need to approve these guidelines. Um, I I would like to make, I want to propose a change that we make to them though. I don't know if everybody read them and what you think. Um, I, I, so Harrison, are you here to talk about these guidelines? Har it's Jack, yeah. it's Jack. That's, that's Jack. Harrison yeah. Clan. Harrison Clan. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, uh, if I may then. Yes. Uh, a couple of things, but. I'm, I'm going to keep it brief, but so there actually were no previous guidelines. There has been no specific um, commission or anything in charge of burials in Conway for decades, as far as we can see. Um, so we, as one of our first, so I'm representing the cemetery commission, Peter Friesen couldn't be here, the chair. Uh, one of our first things was to say, well, we need to come up with, I mean, it's not even some guidelines, but obviously the very basics. If someone wants to purchase a plot, what would his cost, his or her cost be? And, you know, all the various, so there was no extent guidelines. And we have very few records to guide us onto what previously was done as far as the transfers of property when people purchased a, a plot a lot deed. So the only previous lot deed we have, again, is decades old. And in that particular example, the select board, all three members of the select board were the signees to transfer the property to the purchaser of the lot deed. And also an answer to, so we had that bit of background um, to to that and then an answer to this same question about would the select board be the ones that would have the authority to transfer the property and and sign off on the deed or uh, we didn't really know whether the us as commissioners could do that because we're not 
a committee even, we're not elected, we're not, um, you know, this is involving a transfer of property. Anyway, previously, the former town administrator had advised us that only the select board could transfer property. So then we, again, these guidelines are just being invented by us now. So then we revised or a clause to specify that the select board in article two of our guidelines would be the uh, party that essentially authorizes the uh, lot deed. And uh, then um, we wanted obviously to circulate this around and make sure if the select board was gonna be involved in this as they had been decades ago, you, you know, see what your thoughts were and was that okay and would that be how it would go, run going forward the way we envisioned it in this scenario was just you know we as a new commission that hadn't existed before would be the people who could help people with finding a plot finding out whether there is a plot in the cemetery they're interested in and handle all that sort of uh, we'll call it customer contact for lack of a better word and that at some point, once uh, the details had been all, everything was hunky-dory, then we would just convey that to say, well, okay, that sounds good. Please make out a, you know, your payment to the town of Conway and we will have the town um, select board um, authorize or sign off on the deed, which you will, you know, they would then receive a copy and it would all be, and then the clerk would help us in filing it in a dedicated place um, so that we would have better records going forward because right now we're operating without a lot of specific um, burial records in Conway. So, and again, so the questions were, you know, who, is that okay what we're saying? And um, Ross, um, Mr. Perry um, replied that he had checked with counsel who had said, well, actually he thinks the commissioners can um, authorize the transfer of property. And I, I'm a little surprised only because we're not really an elected, we're not a board or, you know, an elected committee. Um, I mean, we'll probably would go wherever the town directs us on that. Previous, the previous town administrator had said that only the select board could trans, I think I may have said that, you know, so, so there's a little confusion there on our part and, uh, we just wanted, you know, because the deed itself is very much uh, like a, you know, a contract. We transfer to, you know, them, their heirs, assigns and whatever, you know, the rights to this property. So it is a, it is a very um, key transaction, as it were. And I just didn't know whether commissioners were the party that could sign off on that. Well, we had a number of meetings with Peter early on and and between he and tom what they told us was that the conway select board had been authorizing plots only because the 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 cemetery committee or commission had been disbanded and so then it was left to the select board to do it but by recre by creating an uh, the, the commission a new cemetery commission uh, um, we could probably now follow the normal law, which according to council, yes, is that the commission would would assign plots and that the board has no, the select board has no role at all. So, okay. So, I, I, so Bob, I think, I think what, what Tom might have been referring to, though, because I, I, I remember him talking to me about this, was that the, the thing in our, we have bylaws about the duties of each, whatever. And in our bylaw, there, there's a broadly interpreted clause about this, uh, the select board uh, has the, the, the authority to, uh, only the select board has the authority to buy and sell property, uh, real property up for the town or of the town. But that was like a section eight or paragraph eight of the duties bylaw. And, and assigning a burial plot is considered Selling? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't have any, you know, great need to sign those deeds myself. I, 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 uh, I think that um, if, if, it, if it makes things easier for the commission, uh, 
uh, the cemetery commission and the individual commissioners, I'm all for yeah. giving them, let, letting them do the thing. I, I think I, I thought, I thought what I saw Jack was, was really well done and just a nice, a nice little set of policies and thought it, thought Jack, it was appropriate. Would you rather give that to the select board or would you rather retain? I, I don't think it's a matter of our preference as a matter of what legally is the standing. Um, the deed, the current deed, um, which needs some revision, but um, I have looking at one from 1960s, which is one of the few that we could find. The, but the current deed, um, and this is consistent with other towns, you know, basically says we grant, bargain, sell, and convey to the, you know, to whether the party, the purchasing party, heirs and assigns. Um, so it is a legal contract, just like any other deed. You know, they have the property sort of in perpetuity. So it's just the question of whether a, an appointed commissioner or commission, you know, can do that within law. And I just, you know, I'm not familiar with bylaws and I'm not familiar with the differences between, for example, a committee and a commission. Um, we are being a commission. So it's just, you know, operating out of um, wanting to do this right legally um, both for the purchaser of the lot and obviously protecting the town in being proper, properly. Um, so, you know, that's really, I don't know that there's a strict preference of how it would be. I think it's just wanting to do it according to all the proper state or town, you know, I, rules. I feel like my preference would be for the cemetery commission to take that on if that meets the the, the legal counsel's, um, you know, standards, and they say it's okay. I am perfectly comfortable having the cemetery commission play that role. Jack, do you have a need for this to be decided today? No, my my role today, and especially as as Peter's not here, which unfortunately he couldn't, really was to explain the background for the question. And what we were hoping by sending you the draft previously was just just this to say we're not really familiar with uh, we're not lawyers so we're not familiar with law but we're also not familiar with just as phil had mentioned is there possibly a town bylaw that says only the select board could do this um so it doesn't have to be resolved today um we're not on a we're trying to do this right because we're inventing this all from scratch um, so, um, we want to just get this into making sure that it's, um, I guess all hunky dory, you know, in terms of how things have to be done according to the state or whatever, or the town. Um, so, uh, and I don't think there's any, uh, you know, any problem with the commissioners being the authority that transfers the property. We were just not sure whether we really had the authority to do that. So in the past, however many years, I mean, people have been interred in Conway. Has the, has the select board had to, I mean, has there been a transfer of property or has there been a purchase of a burial plot in the past 25 years that the select board has had to sign off on? Are you asking me, Erica? Or Yeah, <laughs> as well, a representative of the cemetery. Yeah, so the problem there is, is the lack of good record keeping about plot or burial lot purchases. Wouldn't so we don't it, have, it okay. seems that like, because they were more recent, as I said, I'm looking at one from 1965 or 64. There were, you know, I, I have to defer to um, Peter on this, but I don't know that there was a lot of precedent information available to us to figure out what had been done. So that's why we are, as I said, pretty much making this all up from Mm -hmm. And our guidelines are, you know, drawn both from other towns and also from common sense and our local situation. But in any case, um, as I said, the question, it's more putting the question out there. We're not adverse to doing it. At least that is my um, take on Peter's opinion. Uh, he would have to speak for himself. But on the other hand, we don't want to obviously sign our names to a contractual document if for some reason we are not legally empowered to do that because that wouldn't be fair to the lot 
right. uh, the family who was purchasing can a I, lot. Can I explain well. sort of how we got into this, this, this type of discussion? Sure. I saw, I saw the guidelines and I read through them. I think they were very well written. And I saw the highlighted section that said, you know, the select board are the only ones who can transfer land. I heard Bob say one day that his preference as a select board is to transfer as much to other committees and boards as possible. So I found chapter 114, section two of the Mass General Laws and it read and says, absolutely the cemetery commission can do that. Uh, and then I verified that with town council. So this, I believe the cemetery commission can have the authority to transfer deeds for burial plots. I think the topic is, does the cemetery commission want that authority or does the selectman want that authority? Or are they willing to delegate it to the commission? And, but legally, it could be done by the cemetery commission. The question is, what do you want to do? I'm, well, I'm do, just surprised do we have that a... there's, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm surprised that there's no records or that this isn't information that's not readily available. Um, records of people either purchasing or transferring burial plots over the past, you know, 25 years. Well, they may be in, in select board uh, records. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so. But not, there's not a burial, there's not, you know, uh, aggregate burial records through time that you can follow through. It may be, because I know there have been some people who have been interred, like somebody was interred in Cricket Hill. Yeah. Not that many years ago. So there was clearly some thing transpired, but it just may be part of a, of a, a you know, range of uh, select board records. Uh, and, and just in reply to, to Ross, if I may call you, your first name. Um, I, yeah, the question yeah. would have to be put to us whether we had any issue with doing that. As I said, my personal opinion is we don't, as long as there isn't a, either a town bylaw or any other reason why we would not have the, you know, we would be at jeopardy to sign off on a deed, you know, the deed. I mean, I don't think there's a, I don't think the commission would have an issue with taking care of that. As I said, speaking for myself, but probably that's the way Peter would uh, look at it. And as I said, so the, so uh, part of it would be that we would want to find out from you, do we have that choice? We're all set. There's no bylaw or anything else that would have to be changed to allow us to do that. And then if that comes back to us as the cemetery commission, we'll have a meeting and we'll decide whether for some reason that wouldn't be the way we, way we want to do it. As I said, I don't think that's going to be a problem, but you know, that's another issue. So I guess you were asking Bob. Yeah. So we're not looking for a resolution of this right away, but we are looking for just making sure we get the clear um, answer on it. I don't see so how we can know. vote on it today oh, until we have yeah. the answers to those questions. Well, exactly. I mean, as I said, I'm here as a member of the commission to present our question <laughs> again yeah. and explain yeah. the background and you know give you a little more, obviously, a picture about how there is not a lot of other information to guide us on this. And so, yeah, I'm, well, I think we're perfectly comfortable and hopefully we could have it, uh, you know, maybe just a, a quick meeting with you at some other point where we can have um, Peter and, and Steve Jackson and, um, you know, the complete commission where maybe we can resolve it and, and um, settle it from that. So I'm, I'm fine with letting it go to, uh, you know, get a follow up. We'll be meeting in two weeks. And so, and perhaps by then you guys could have an answer to your question of whether you want to do, whether you want the responsibility and Ross, maybe you could solve whether we have a bylaw. Uh, yeah, so, we're meeting uh, next week. So I, I'm sure we can, I'll take it up with, you know, bring it into our agenda and just make sure that if we're all, as a commission, we're all, you know, good with that. So I can take care of that next week in our meeting. Jack, can you send me that what question you want answered so I get it, get it specific to your inquiry? I'm not sure. I'm glad to put it into writing, Ross. Um, um, yeah. 
But I, I, I think Ross, it's you know, cause you got the you got the, uh, the the opinion of the of the uh, council already. So my, you know, I guess the question is, does does that bylaw uh, cause you know co contradict the, the state whatever? Is is that something? Is that something? Yeah, because if the bylaw is not on point, then we can go with the interpretation of the state law that already exists. If the bylaw is however says something different then that's what it is i just remember it's section eight because i only remember that because i used to watch mash and corporal Klinger was always trying to get a section eight discharge so well i mean you you are right that the bylaw says only the town can buy and sell land but i believe that's separate and from chapter 114 that says cemetery commissions or cemetery boards can do that and that's what I think town council confirmed is that they can do that. Well, and we can authorize them to do that. Yes. That sounds like it's kind of already decided then. And um, I mean, just go well, ahead. And that's, why I, I, uh, that's why I was asking Jack to send me the question because I thought that we had answered it. But if I didn't phrase the question the right way, I can go ahead and do that. But um no, I, th I think what you said was helpful, but I think um, for us, we really weren't sure whether, um, I wanted to give you the background back that the select board had handled these previously. And also, I just wasn't sure whether there was any uh, distinction between commissions and committees and board boards as to what their authorities would be. And likewise, I hadn't thought about the bylaws, but whether there was just anything in, in regs that said we weren't, um, able to do it. So anyway, I will summarize that question again in case it needs to be incorporated into any um, you know, agenda or something for next time. But meanwhile, I will go back to the commission, you know, we'll have a, put it in our agenda for our meeting to just say, okay, if, uh, if everything allows us to transfer property and sign these deeds, are we as a commission, you know, okay with that going forward. I think, as I said, I don't really see a reason why we wouldn't be, but um, I can't speak for the entire commission. Um, and then if we could maybe meet with you again, maybe we can settle that just so we, um, you know, we have so, on record. So can, and can I suggest, Jack, that we do it in two weeks on, on the, uh, the 7th of June, which is two days after town meeting, because um, I want to, I think we're going to want you to come back in two weeks anyway, wearing a different hat. So you might as well bring both hats, wearing your Festival of the Hills uh, board hat, because <laughs> we want to have, uh, I want to have the discussion that I've been wanting to have for like a year now with the, the, the committee about bringing you back to Mother Conway, to the town, bringing you back as a town committee, which you were for a while, but it never really was a properly done town committee. So I, I want to just sit down. I want to have as a, just a discussion with the Festival of the Hills committee about what would be involved in becoming a town committee, whether it would be beneficial and um, and just, you know, whether it might serve to inject new life into the community and its relationship with the festival. OK, well, um, just if you could quickly on that i i'm not actually a board member of the festival but i can convey that message ah. to the board i'm i'm just one of the lower level contributors to the ah. to, to the you, cause you, you're too much in any case i can pass that on to the actual to the board Please um, do. and as far as yeah i think actually i think our meeting might be june 6th <laughs> so so it might be we can have our meeting on june 6th and then uh if all is uh, well with their schedules, then we can meet with you on the seventh and and sew up the issue of the commission and the deeds. Great. Uh, yeah, um, pretty sure. I what I just want to check is my. I'll have to check my calendar, but I'm pretty sure June sixth. Do you happen to know whether the seventh is a Wednesday? Uh, should be a Monday. It'd be a Monday. Oh, okay. Because the fifth is a Saturday. Okay, well then, actually, that may not work. Um, can I get back to you on that? Because it might be that actually our meeting is after your meeting. We usually meet on Tuesdays. Oh, so and not tomorrow. 
<laughs> no, I was, I was uh, not tomorrow, but uh, I'm going to have to check on that. Okay. So, and it, well, we, one way or the other, we'll get it into the agenda. Um, and I appreciate your giving me the information. I will go back, as I said, when we have our meeting and we will bring that out. Uh, if I can maybe post you on that so that um, we can fit it into one of your agendas going forward. Uh, you can Not really thank Peter for all of this. I mean, he, he's the guy who really came to the select board and said, I don't know that you guys are even thinking about burial plots, but y you know, the, the town has been, you know, expecting you guys to do it and you're not doing it. And, y you know, I think, I thought that what triggered this was somebody came maybe to Peter or to somebody and said, how do I buy a plot? And uh, yeah. so it, it's great that this got kicked off. Yeah, no, I, so, and, and I think we see that. Yeah, it's been very ad hoc, I think, in past years. And also a lot of people didn't realize, you know, that there is the possibility, um, which is one of the things we will do. Once these guidelines are available, they'll be posted, you know, on the web page as part of our commission information. So if somebody has inquiries, they'll know where to go and where to start. Um, and the other thing is we, 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 we are eligible for prison labor to clean up our cemeteries. Okay. And we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't ask them to do that but they just spent the better part of a week at the Howland Cemetery and they did a nice job. Wow. Um, okay, well, uh, that, that will uh, add a certain spice to the next meeting when I, yeah. when I bring that info up. I'll <laughs> see how that, uh, so um, if I may just, so it would be helpful to you, Ross, if me just to, just to synop, create a synopsis of the question again, that you will come back to with an answer, I guess, for us when we next meet and i my part will go off uh other than sending you that um summary question we'll go off and have in our meeting bring put on the agenda that we will ask are we okay with doing that great uh, yeah so as, like soon as, you're, as soon as you're as soon as you've had your meeting let me know and i'll push you into the next select board's yeah, meeting that, that'll, that'll be excellent i don't think it'll be something that will involve a lot of discussion at that point so i appreciate that uh, thank you very much for you know your time tonight. Oh, thank you. So, no, I, I did have a suspicion that would be an interesting discussion, though. That it would. Just... Yeah. Well, there will be other things that will come up, but um, for now, that's the most. Our, our establishing these guidelines and then establishing the final wording of the deed, which is kind of related to the guidelines, are are two two of our most urgent things. Um, and Veronica, you have something for me you wanna ask? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Harris. I just wanted to ask, the commission covers both the public and the private cemeteries in town? No, okay, good question, no. So there is a, um, I think it's the Conway Cemetery Association that's responsible for Howland and Pine okay. Grove, where over oh, down on, on Reedsbridge Road. And so, yeah, we have, nothing to do with them okay. uh, there is a, they have their their board um, um i know phyllis stacy is one of the members yeah okay so you 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 can you are a commission that covers the seven town owned plots Correct. okay Correct. thank you sure you're welcome okay next on our agenda Thanks, uh, well veronique is still <laughs> here uh, uh we want to have a, a vote to uh, allow Veronique to serve uh, on the newsletter as the newsletter committee member, in addition to her town administrator duties. I so move. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we have a motion and we have a second. Veronique, would you like to speak to this or is this so obvious that, that, <laughs> that we should all vote our heart here? I would love to continue to serve if I'm allowed to. Thank you. <laughs> and we'd be honored. <laughs> so all in favor then. We have a motion and it's been seconded. All in favor. Aye. I see Erica's aye. Yep. Phil's aye. aye. And I say aye. So I am. Um, uh, Veronique, I'm glad. You, I, I thought you were going to be leaving us early. So I wanted to. I was hoping we would get to this while you. Oh, were yes. My, the Board of Health starts at six. So I'm good until Great. then. <laughs> Great. Thank you. What, what time does the pre-town meeting start? Seven. Seven. 
So next on our agenda is to look at the motions for the annual town meeting. Did everybody have a chance to look at them? They seemed okay? Everything looked good to me. What's the article five that we're, that we're passing over already? Uh, it was that actually was $5,700 50, for the um, school for some capital project. And they've said they don't need that money because your next agenda item ah. is to authorize them to spend a lot of money out of E and D, and that avoids the that Article Five. So this is our first loan payment. No, right? I mean, no. This is the the. Um, or well, not loan payment, but payment for the capital projects. Uh, for, for the the and the and no no payment? no article five I thought was was our first payment towards the capital projects that Frontier is authorized. No, it was it was a specific capital request for other stuff for the girls' locker room something something for some uh, lockers and and, and stairway tread tread something something things like that. Um, okay. But they withdrew it. I, they were talking about doing that because they, 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 uh, they get really nervous about the bigger capital request that is the next one or the generator that's not theirs and all that. Um, so, the, but so, so the E and D for for those that don't know, the E and D is what the school your school district calls free cash, and um, no. Normally, uh, E and D, the, the school committee can, uh, as its own budgetary authority of its own budget, can spend its own E and D or allocate its own E and D um, to the budget. But once uh, once town meeting takes place, they um, and their budget is done. They then need they then need to ask the select board permission to spend from E and D other than what was previously allocated. And their E and D numbers this year were pretty large. Um, and, and so, so there still will be, they have a tradition of giving half of the E and D back to the towns um, to reduce assessments, even though they, the way they do it, they never get any credit for it. It never comes out at town meeting. And, um, and it's a huge give back to the town. But, um, but anyway, they, they, um, They'll still be doing the fifty percent um, return of E and D to the towns uh, of the of their E and D to the towns, and which no other schools do. If that, you know, if you remember, I asked the tech school whether they ever give back any of their E and D to the towns to lower assessment. And they looked at me like I was from Mars, and they never heard of that idea, and they thought it was a terrible idea, and uh, they couldn't imagine doing their budget without spending every penny of their E and D that they want to. So, um, um, so, th 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 so there is a request to do some the extra the the E and D the 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 itemized thing that I saw was to, for for the track stuff that didn't make it into the track project um, the expansion of the jump pits for high whatever the high jump and the pole vault and the 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 you know little bit just a tiny bit of landscaping instead of just that whole prison chain link prison aesthetic. Um, and think, you know, so that's what, that's, what's in the request. So, um, I don't know if we're at that are agenda we, item yet. We are. All right. Then I would move well, to, well, go ahead. Okay. It, it's actually the next agenda, but All right. uh, so this agenda item was to prove, you know, the motions uh, and right. you asked about. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They, they look, I mean, they all, I don't know. Well, you, you're the one that gets to read them all, so you'll, right. you'll so find I, out. You'll, I, I don't see that we need to vote to approve them. You yeah, know, it's an opportunity to talk about them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want you to see what I had written. Um, the Article 2 is broken into four sections, and I just put in the dollar amounts because if anybody, if they move to remove any of those items, we need to have a new total, and this be a way to keep track of it. So I just put in the dollar amounts. The only other articles that are somewhat questionable is the articles 22, 21, and 23, <laughs> as far as what amounts to put in there. 
Um, we had a discussion today with Joe from the planning board about whether to put in um, not to exceed an appraised value or not to exceed an assessed value, or whether it can be one of those numbers plus 25%. Um, but other than that, I think the motion's pretty straightforward unless you you all found something. No, they sounded good. Okay. That's good then, thank you. I mean, I, I, I think the idea to, to change the, the from the from the appraised value to the I mean from the yeah from the appraised value to the assessed value to the appraised value or assessed value times one point two five or something like that. Well, I'm uh, going to check what state law allows us to yeah. do in that. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I yeah. don't oh. know whether and I've asked town council to review these as well. I want to be sure that he's comfortable with us putting down you no. Know, not more than appraised or assessed value, or if we have to put in an actual dollar amount. Um, that's my concern, is I expect that he's going to say we need an actual dollar amount, but I'll let you know. Yeah. Uh, Bob, nice. when, yeah. when it comes to reading yeah. the, t the motions at town meeting, pl please take the version I give you that morning in case there's some changes <laughs> between now and then. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> good, good point. Yeah. All right, so we're good on that one, and then yeah, the next, the next one is, is yeah, the next one is authorizing the Frontier Regional School request that they spend D and D according to the track stuff and everything you just mentioned, Phil. So, um, did, were there any yeah. questions on that? No, but th so that this has been a state law that once the town once the school does its budget and submits it to the towns. That it's needed, you needed to request permission from the select boards to spend E and D. And um, but your school committee uh, just started. We just became aware of this law last year or two years ago. And apparently, since from the beginning of Frontier, nineteen fifty eight until two years ago, that was never done. So now, at least, we're uh, we're on the up and up. Finally. <laughs> So I, I'm going to make a motion that we authorize Frontier to reallocate $158,730 from E&D uh, to be spent uh, as they described in their note. Right. And and of that amount, the, the, the amount that actually would be Conway's portion of E&D is 16%. So, yeah. Just, so, yeah. so yes, I second your motion. But, but none of this is coming out of taxes. I mean, correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Okay, so we have a motion and it's seconded. Uh, everybody, all in favor, say aye. 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 And I say aye, so I think that's unanimous. Erica, Phil, and I say aye. And and then uh, sign the FY21 stipends. Did we get a note about that, Ross? I don't recall seeing it. Yeah, they're on the table. So I they're don't all know whether you got that information or not. Okay. So we don't need to vote on that, but we do need to come to Conway and sign the site and we'll all be driving right past town hall tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are there any items not anticipated? Um, oh, wait. Yes, of course, the uh, Conway Men's Basketball League resuming play Wednesday, next Wednesday, the first Wednesday in June. At the grammar school, you must be vaccinated. You don't actually have to. Your gender is unimportant as long as you play defense. But it's still <laughs> I called that sounds like a lot like in the. It's still called uh, the men's basketball league. Great. Sounds like an announcement to me, but we'll take it. Oh, yeah. Time. There you go. It's okay. That unanticipated breakthrough. <laughs> Ross, how about your uh, your update? Um, we talked about town meeting, and for anybody tuning in, town meeting is Saturday, June 5th at 1 o'clock at the grammar school. Um, after we met earlier, um, I guess it was last week, I talked to the fire chief, and he says it would not be safe to use that back driveway as the overflow for the meeting. We need to keep um, that open for emergency vehicle access. So the plan is to use 
uh, the gym with chairs spaced six feet apart. They'll be set up in pairs. That setup is either going to be done Friday afternoon um, or early Saturday morning. Ron Sweet has offered a couple people to help with the setup Saturday morning and the takedown on Sunday. Um, to maximize seating space on the floor, um, I'm arranging for the Select Board Finance Committee and moderator to be on the stage. That's going to require some effort for the custodian to push the stuff that's stored up there back, but he's going to work on that. Um, if additional space is needed, then we'll set up chairs in the large hallway that leads from the lobby. And I'm working on details to get a sound system and microphones set up. In fact, I'm supposed to meet a vendor there tonight during the pre-town meeting. Great. On the topic of COVID, um, you probably have all heard that the governor is basically uh, removing all of the COVID restrictions as of May 29th. Um, and he will end the state of emergency as of June 15th. Um, what this means is the former open meeting law requirements are returning, and therefore all the, at least the board chair and a quorum of members must be physically present at the meeting. That's starting June 15th. The board may decide to still offer Zoom sessions as a public convenience, but board and committee members have to be present. And I've just sent an email to all boards and committees with that um, news. Um, miscellaneous, um, Vernique and I continue to meet and discuss town administrator transition activities. I think we're in communication almost daily, and she's in here once or twice a week to go through files and ask her questions. Um, next week, because of Memorial Day and the town meeting, I'll be in Conway Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, instead of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The draft agenda for the June 7th is an after-action discussion of what happened at town meeting. Hopefully, that'll be a pleasant discussion. Uh, review RFP results and the school's recommendation to select a playground contractor. Discuss and vote um, to rescind the March 16th, 2020 um, local state of emergency that the select board passed and to full and discuss fully opening municipal buildings to its pre-COVID status. Um, also uh, uh, to, for consideration is discussing establishing a festival of hills as a town committee and to have them have the ability to receive and spend funds to be awarded in scholarships. And I've added tonight um, to vote and approve the mosquito opt-out plan. So, so that's so, all I've got for today. Can I just make a slight, Ross, just to what you said, just because um, the, the governor, uh, his, his order that becomes effective make, did not remove all restrictions on mask wearing. There's, there's a few that are pertinent to us besides just the you know, public trans and hospitals, all that. The K through 12 schools are an exception, a specific exception to that rule, to that order. Um, and so you're, and it's important for people to know because your Conway Grammar School committee has a policy in effect for over a year now that um, you have to have a mask on to go into that building, to go into the school. And that is true at town meeting. And that, I might further add that at this point, that that mask policy is actually contractual, is actually collective bargain that be, a, a, as we have had to adjust repeatedly through memorandums of understanding our uh, work conditions clauses for all, our four unions, um, this has, the, the mask policy has gone into the collective bargaining ag agreement by virtue of memorandum of a supplemental memorandum of understandings. So I'm not even sure we can like, we can get rid of it by September. I mean, because at this point, getting rid of it is a major, you know, it's four separate discussions with four separate union groups. So um, we, we have a mask policy for, for the school, no matter what the governor said. Well, until the governor says otherwise, until the governor says that we can't have one. But right now, even after his order, the school, the, our, our grammar school is still a mask only zone. So 
That's fine. I'm, I was thinking municipal, but I think it's important to clarify that. Thank you. I say that for the people listening, too, because I know there's been some confusion about it um, for people considering going to town meeting. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any select board member comments? Concerns? No? Yep. Are there, uh, Ross, did we get any mail that needs to get read? Um, I don't think so. I, I didn't get any, no. Okay. The, uh, the, audit, the audit that we got that, that Jan Warner sent around from was really, really a good audit. I don't know if everybody saw that. You should read it. It's, they really struggled to come up with anything for us at all besides you're doing a great job but um, um I, I i can summarize that uh for the board at our next meeting if you'd like great yeah great yeah okay how about any announcements men's basketball is starting up phil yeah wednesdays great <laughs> okay our next meeting so normally we're you know we're on a two-week schedule our next meeting is june 7th uh as of now, I think we'll still have that using Zoom, and at some point we need to have that discussion. Well, that's it. It's June 7th, and then the June 14th is the last legal day to have a Zoom meeting. So that that's that's the discussion right now. You can't yeah, yeah. The next one after the next one after June 7th has got to be live and in the flesh, unless they get a new law be between now and then. The legislator has has to act. Yeah, it's my understanding the legislature has a working committee, but it sounds like it's not even going to get together until the fall. So I think we won't see a, a yeah. change to open meeting law requirements until then. I hope they don't change it. I think it's important that we have in-person meetings and be in-person available for small towns especially. So We'll have a lot of committees busily scheduling the uh, the general purpose room over in town hall and we can drop our zoom subscriptions then can we <laughs> do we still need so many don't we have like four three but yeah three? okay so i'm going to move that we uh, adjourn the meeting and we see each other quite soon at the annual uh well at the uh pre-town meeting at the very good thank you very much thank you, thank you.